Launched in 2008, HGTV's Love It or List It brought a unique aspect of competition to the venerable home renovation genre on television. Though it has been on the air for more than a decade, there's so much about the show that isn't shown on screen. Here's the truth about HGTV's Love It or List It. Love It or List It has been part of the HGTV lineup for so long, it's worth pointing out that the show actually got its start north of the border, originating in Canada. Stars David Visitine and Hilary Farr are, like the show, Canadian, while production takes place in Toronto. Love It or List It originates from Toronto-based production company Big Coat Media and has become what the Toronto star dubbed, quote, one of the most successful franchises in Canadian history. In addition to its American and Canadian success, the show can also be seen in 150 television markets throughout the world. As Big Coat Media's Maria Armstrong, who came up with the concept for the show, explained, to the Toronto Star, people can relate to it because not one homeowner out there has not sat down and had this question on their minds. Should I renovate my house or move out and buy something else? The bickering, lovingly contentious relationship that realtor David Vicentine and designer Hilary Farr display on Love It or List It has left many viewers wondering if the pair is actually married. They're not, but they are great friends in real life, and the dynamic that viewers see on screen reflects that. And are you going to love it? Or are you going to list it? That tight friendship, however, does not predate the show. As Vicentine revealed in an interview with Monsters and Critics, the first time he met his love it or list it partner was when he was auditioning for the series, and their chemistry was immediate. We kind of hit it off, although if you were talking to her, she says that she doesn't remember me at all. She only remembered the tall, dark and handsome guy. I'm like, well, he's not here, so clearly he wasn't good enough. Regardless of Farr's memory, that first meeting was enough to impress the powers that be that they'd found their on-screen duo. As Vicentine recalls, about a week after that audition, he received a call telling him to be ready to start filming in a week. In 2015, producers of Love It or List It decided to broaden its geographical horizons beyond Toronto. For a change of pace, filming took place in North Carolina, specifically within the Raleigh-Durham region. Executive producer Maria Armstrong revealed that the show's production company, Big Coat Media, was shooting two full seasons there. At that time, Armstrong said there were no other US cities being considered as potential filming locations because producers were impressed with the local real estate market. While the show's primary contractor, Staten Island native Eric Eremita, continued to oversee each renovation project, the show turned to local tradespeople to get the actual work done. When Gillian Harris was selected to be the lead on the fifth season of The Bachelorette, she was the first Canadian to be cast in that role. This would not be her only major reality TV gig. In 2012, an announcement revealed that Harris, an interior designer by trade, would be starring alongside realtor and actor Todd Talbot in a Love It or List It spin-off set in the Canadian city of Vancouver. The aptly named Love It or List It Vancouver made its television debut in 2013. Eventually, it made its way to American viewers via HGTV, where it was renamed with the less specific title of Love It or List It 2. The spin-off proved to be popular enough to warrant another entry into the Love It or List It franchise, with a 2015 announcement that a third show was on the way titled Love It or List It Vacation Homes. Other than the focus on vacation homes instead of homeowners' primary residences, the format remained identical to the other shows, with designer Dan Vickery and realtor Elisa Goldhawk tapped as hosts. Love It or List It made big headlines in 2012 thanks to an interview that then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton gave to the New York Times. Asked about her favorite television shows, she singled out Love It or List It, saying she finds the series, quote, very calming. Another big celebrity Love It or List It fan is Hoda Kotb, who was downright starstruck when Farr and Vicentine visited the Today Show. Other famous talk show fans include Kelly Clarkson, who praised the show's bingeable quality, while Farr and Vicentine made a video chat appearance on her talk show in 2020. I love your show. I totally probably just scared you with how much I'm into your show. 
As anyone who's ever hunkered down and watched a Love It or List It marathon will tell you, homeowners usually choose to love it and stay with their existing home after it's been extensively redesigned by Hilary Farr and her team. On those occasions when homeowners follow David Vicentine's lead and decide to move, Farr does everything she can to keep her annoyance under wraps. As the designer has revealed in interviews, she tries to keep her displeasure to herself as much as possible, although she admits she feels stung by the rejection. As Farr explained to MEA Worldwide, I really am upset when a couple lists the house, but would never give David the satisfaction of showing it. Regardless of whether homeowners love or list, Farr insisted that when ever takes place on the show never deters her from her quote great mission in life which is constantly poking fun at her friend and co-host david actually so, i was having a beer then, not a not a pop oh, well that's why you didn't know I just, had a beer. just one while the vast majority of homeowners whose houses are renovated on Love It or List It choose to stay put and enjoy the work of designer Hilary Farr, that shouldn't reflect poorly on real estate agent David Vicentine's powers of persuasion. As he explained to the Los Angeles Times, it depends on the homeowners. There are certain things they drool over, and it's sometimes not what you think. We had a homeowner who left because of a garage. When it's all boiled down, Vicentine believes that he and Farr, quote, are kind of like therapists. The format of the show allows them to provide an arena for couples to work out their differences over what they really want in a home. Very often, that means the couple realizes they're very invested in where they live already, and by showing them other homes, he's able to help them realize that. Sometimes, though, it's all just a matter of timing. As Vicentine has noted, he's reconnected with couples who chose to stay in their homes, only to sell them a year later. Fans of Love It or List It know Hilary Farr for her work as a designer, but probably don't realize that her first love was show business. Before that fateful audition that placed her across from David Vicentine, Farr was actually a working actress. According to her IMDb page, Farr, who then went by Hilary LeBeau, boasts screen credits including the 1979 miniseries A Man Called Intrepid and a small part in the Rocky Horror Picture Show as the bride in the wedding scene that opens the film. She landed that role, she revealed, thanks to the film's star Tim Curry, who was a friend and neighbor when she lived in London. Love It or List It launched in Canada and then moved to the US, but the show can also be seen in numerous countries throughout the world, including the UK, Australia, Spain, Brazil, Norway, Bulgaria, Italy, Poland, and Northern Ireland. Meanwhile, there are also standalone international versions. For viewers in the United Kingdom, there's Kirsty and Phil's Love It or List It, featuring Phil Spencer and Kirsty Allsop doing their own version of David and Hillary's dynamic. There's also a Down Under version, Love It or List It Australia, featuring property expert Andrew Winter and designer Neil Whitaker. There's even a special French language version, produced specifically for viewers in the Canadian province of Quebec, where French is predominantly spoken. When watching so-called reality television, it's natural to wonder how much of what appears on screen is real and how much is played up for the cameras, if not outright fakery. When it comes to love it or list it, however, a couple who appeared on the show attested that what viewers see on TV is a pretty accurate depiction of what actually takes place. Marcy and Matt Lou spoke with Delish about their experiences on the show when they appeared in 2015. While the couple wouldn't address the long-standing rumors that two endings are filmed, with editors then picking the one that works best, they confirmed that the first time they saw their renovated home was when the cameras were rolling. They also admitted they had no say in what those renovations would be. One big positive of having one's home renovated for an HGTV show is that, unlike a real-life non-TV reno, the contractor stays within the budget and completes the project on time. According to Marcy Liu, the crew actually cared, quote, more about timing than the couple did. When the pandemic slammed the brakes on film and television production in March 2020, both scripted and unscripted TV series were affected. When production on HGTV's Love It or List It eventually resumed later that year, some pandemic-related changes in how the show was being produced needed to be made. When the first socially distanced episode aired in November of that year, some key differences emerged. One big change reflected the new reality in real estate. Whereas realtor David Vicentine would typically drive with the homeowners to get a first-hand look at the homes he was pitching them, this time out they arrived at the home solo. 
Instead of receiving an in-person tour, Vicentine instead guided them through the home via video chat from another location. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.